pointed out, he is saying all the right things, Jerome Powell, right? He keeps talking about that, that, that inflation is not yet a problem, doesn't see it becoming a problem, uh, that right now we're averaging below 2%, uh, that the virus is weighing on the economy and he doesn't want to risk doing anything crazy as that virus continues to weigh on the economy. He's concerned about household spending, that it, 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 it it's still holding up, but he fears that this drags on much longer. It might not. So that doesn't sound like a guy who's inclined to change his position. And yet, uh, nothing, no, 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 no favorable reaction to this to sort of tamp down the selling that had been going on. Uh, Rebecca Walzer with us right now, Gary Kelpum as well. Gary, that's weird. We don't normally see that. It's very clear that if you think about it, uh, Powell came into the middle of this sell-off, particularly the NASDAQ route, particularly Tesla now in beer market territory, presumably to say all the right things to calm people down. They're not calmed down. What do you make of that? Well, he's saying the same things he's been saying over and over again. And what you've seen over the last few days, Neil, I think a bunch of bubbles have popped. You saw it in GameStop. You're seeing it in the SPACs. Uh, you're seeing in penny stocks that went up uh, 500 percent that are now being cut in half. And when the market wants to go down, it just wants to go down. But I have to tell you, he mentioned something. There isn't any inflation. Well, if you get a chart of lumber and copper and aluminum <laughs> and nickel, and Beanie Babies, and everything else under the sun. They are a moonshot right now for everything, uh, and that is a cost to the economy and potential hurt for the economy. And I will promise you, those prices will be passed on. That is the definition of inflation. Yet he looks in the camera and says he doesn't see any inflation. I'm not so sure that's good for markets when the market's saying one thing and he's saying another. Mm. Uh, the Beanie Baby thing is what worries me the most. Uh, but, Rebecca, <laughs> you know, I'm wondering, um, I think he does see inflation a little bit, and he might be thinking about it a little bit, um, but he's not going to panic or certainly let on um, that he's panicking. Uh, and that might be all well and good, because even with these run-ups that Gary alluded to, the overall, you know, inflation rate that we're seeing, even the backup in the 10-year Treasury now, approaching, you know, 1.36 percent, still very low. Um, you get it to two, you start getting it to two and a half, maybe maybe it changes. Where are you on this? It's so funny. Gary just uh, woke, uh, woke in a lot of Americans, Neil, by like, explaining that the uh, real CPI numbers are not what the Fed is necessarily looking at. So uh, your audience just might have gotten alarmed there. But to, to Gary's point, I think the best part of the interview that you just showed, Neil, was when Senator Kennedy asked Powell point blank, what is the goal to get back to normalcy? Obviously, we're, we're in a period of non-normalcy with all the stimulus. And Powell's answer is so true. So for all of those people that think that we can just indefinitely spend forever. Listen to what Powell said himself. He said, we need to get a place where what we're stimulating is less than what is organically being generated by the economy. Those aren't his exact words, but that's what he said. And that's the point, Neil. I hope this administration is listening to their own federal chairman. What we're saying is reopen the economy, get this economy going again organically, because the stimulation cannot last indefinitely for all those people that think it can. It can't. And Gary's right. We are seeing price hikes. We are seeing that in gasoline. We are seeing this affecting our pockets. So when we hear the Fed say no, st you know, no true inflation, and I agree with your point, Neil, we're really not hyperinflation. We're not in hyperinflation, but we see the, the cracks and we've got to deal with that. And, and that's to Prowl's point. He said we've got to get organic economy going back again. Gary, do you think he is looking at the stock market? I mean, um, if the averages avoid corrections or even go into a bear market. Um, but individual issues like Tesla are. Um, is that something he can ignore or say, all right, well, that was that's a frothy one. We could have told you if something that goes up from 70 to nearly nine hundred dollars a share. That that that's a little weird. So he's not <laughs> venturing that right now, as far as I know. But but um, that he has some cover saying these are unique issues to unique stocks. But the average is by and large holding up pretty well. What do you think? Neil, since Christmas of 18, and I've been writing about it, every correction in the market brought easier money from the Fed, either in their uh, words 
or in their actions, culminating before the pandemic, printing more money, uh, which turned into what they're, we're seeing right now, th uh, th $250 billion being printed a month uh, between us and the ECB. That is all about the market. When he goes and prints and buys up the bonds of Apple and junk bonds, that's all about the market. He is praying the markets continue to cooperate. That's the one thing they have going for them, that they've been able to uh, the market do their bidding for them. If they lose the market, the wealth effect, that is where the trouble lies. And I must tell you, he said something. He can't do anything about wealth inequality. Well, when you bubble up asset prices but screw over savers with 0% interest rates on the short end, that's the definition of creating wealth inequality. So that's another little statement from him that does not hold a lot of water. Mm. You know, real quickly, Rebecca, we talk about how the markets have been enduring a lot of bad news over what last year, this whole COVID thing. And, and part of it is the resiliency of the consumer. We saw reminders of that in the, in the Macy's numbers that came out, Home Depot, that they're still very resilient. And that might explain why people like Janet Yellen, Treasury, are open to other revenue raisers beyond just a hike in corporate taxes he thinks that, that she might be quietly speaking for an administration that feels quite comfortable raising taxes in this environment, even creatively raising them at that. And that might might have a bit to do with this sell off. What do you think? I 100% agree with you. I mean, there is no worse recipe than uh, pre-inflation and raising taxes when you're shut down with half your country in the middle of a global pandemic of 100 years. I mean, it's the perfect storm. So we have to stop, you know, just sh talking pie and sky and be realistic. And, you know, tax raising now, even if it's just corporate, 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 you know, firms invest in R&D, that causes our GDP to grow. So there, there's just no safe place to raise taxes, especially in this environment. All right, guys, I know you're going to be with us.